Thanks for joining us on this video. Today we'll be doing an overview of the game Kingdom Rush Elemental Uprising. As always, we want to make you aware that our overview videos are sponsored in part by our Kickstarter backers and by the creators of this game. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here at Tantrum Mouse Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. And I'm Journeyman Dan, and today we're doing an overview of Kingdom Rush Elemental Uprising by Lucky Duck Games and Ironhide Games Studio. This is a 1-4 to four player tower defense game and a standalone sequel to Kingdom Rush Rift in Time. We've got a prototype copy here, so let's jump in and take a look. The game contains lots of damage tiles, new heroes, enemies, tower cards, and a variety of game board pieces. Set up the board for your scenario and give each player a hero and starting tower cards. Place towers from your hand on the board with their damage tiles on the hordes of enemies. You can also move and attack with your hero. Check for any destroyed hordes, remove them from the board, and gain treasure. Then move any remaining hordes. Return all played and leveled towers to your hand and choose whether you want to purchase new towers or apply an upgrade to an existing tower. Spawn more hordes of enemies and keep repeating rounds until either the enemies overrun your defenses or you complete scenario objectives. The gameplay of Elemental Uprising is the same as Rift in Time, but there are some unique aspects that we want to focus on, starting with the fact that there are no more portals. Instead of portals, you'll have events that will introduce new enemies and develop the storyline. Some hordes reward you with gold, and this gold can be used to apply reusable upgrade stickers to certain towers, giving those towers more power during the game. Of course, if you level that tower up, you lose the upgrade, and these stickers do things like provide additional damage tiles or give you unlimited range on your attack. You'll remove that sticker after each game and store it in this little upgrade pouch for future use. There are also new types of enemies that you'll have to deal with. Some restrict you to only using soldiers to attack them, and others are large, tough enemies that only let you cover one square no matter how big your damage tile may be. You even have new hordes protected by shamans. These tiles will protect all enemies from a certain kind of attack coming from specific directions. For example, if I want to hit this tile with magic, I can only do it by placing towers on the sides. Now, the game does give you some ways to fight these new powerful enemies. For example, the soldier tiles use a splash mechanic. This allows you to place a soldier on one space who can then throw a spear to an adjacent space which ignores the damage restriction. And usually if a tower has multiple directions that it can attack, you can choose which direction you want that damage to go. Mm -hmm. But the new blast mechanic allows you to damage all of the tiles indicated, <laughs> That's pretty cool. which could allow you to hit three or more tiles at once. Far Shot is a new mechanic that lets you hit anywhere on the board, but at the cost of reducing the size mm -hmm. of the damage tile by one square. That's right, and there also are new environmental features called Magic Blossoms and Lava Pools. The Blossoms give you a special attack if you go and pick it up, and the Lava Pools give you extra diamonds that you can pick up as well. And finally, you get new heroes. We only have two in our copy, but there will be more heroes that you can add to the fray. You could even use heroes from Rift in Time if you choose. The two heroes we have are pretty cool. Alric has little sand warriors that he can take da that, that will take damage for him, and that he can also send out for extra attacks. Bruxa, whenever she's near a tile that gets destroyed, mm -hmm. or um, if she's on that tile, she gains special abilities so that every turn she deals extra damage. Well, Kingdom Rush uh, Elemental Uprising is very much like its predecessor, Rift in Time. Mm -hmm. uh, if you enjoyed that game, this game follows up on a lot of what that does well. And the new mechanics come in and they give it a different flavor, a different feel. Uh, when I was playing that, that splash mechanic was really strong and it really helped offset some of those bad guys that come in. Uh, the tough creatures that came in, they are legitimately tough. Uh, <laughs> tough because, for a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get like a square or some bigger piece, but you can only cover one fourth of that creature. So you really have to work together and think. How am I going to do this? How are we going to defeat it and stop from being overrun? Uh, if you have not played Kingdom Rush, that's okay. You can jump right into this. It is standalone. It's not like you're going to be missing anything, although you probably should go check out Rift in Time. <laughs> uh, but you're not going to be lost. It's still going to stand on its own and be 
a game that you will enjoy if this is your kind of game. Yeah, so if you enjoy tower defense type games, a little puzzly nature with those tiles laying down, then check out this new Kingdom Rush Elemental Uprising coming from Lucky Duck Games on GameFound, not Kickstarter, GameFound.com, starting February 9th. Check it out. Elemental Uprising.